about is why we did that and um, how that might be able to map into like your future with Young Living and what you can do with it. So first, so I didn't burden Christian with, Kristen with telling you all about me, I'll tell you a little bit about me so you have some context for the stories that I'm going to tell you. Um, in May of this year, 2017, I am 40 years full-time as a network marketer. It's all I have done since I was 22 years old. And I did not bring to network marketing what maybe some of you brought, network, credibility, education. I worked in a chicken processing plant. I don't know, do you have those in Australia? Yeah. Okay, well, you ever been in one? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's a nice place to visit, but you don't want to live or work there. <laughs> so I was raised in a um, raised on a cattle ranch and a and a big farm, and in that part in Central California, and um, in that part of the country, if you don't go get a good education, you're going to end up working somewhere in agriculture or food processing, and. My parents sold the ranch that I grew up on, so I, had, I ended up working in food processing. And well, I was one of those people, like perhaps you or a lot of people that you talk to, that um, when it came to sales or anything like what we were doing, I, I was like, I had a real attitude about it, totally against it. I was a super introvert. <clears throat> and I actually thought I was going to live out my career, like the next 40 years, working at this place called Foster Farms. In fact, it's kind of ironic, the owner of Foster Farms lives, how far is the walleye hunting from here? 20, 20 miles? She lives on this island. <clears throat> and uh, she's retired now, of course. But I had my entire career mapped out to work in this chicken factory. I actually liked it. I won't go into why, but I just did. I like the people, I like the environment, I like the challenge, I just like the... No, I didn't like chickens, I just like the structure of the business. And I didn't know what else to do. I didn't have any skills, I didn't have any education. So I was all like focused on working at this chicken factory. And then four years into my career, the uh, Foster Farms, actually Norma, who lives 20 miles from here, her husband, Paul <clears throat> decided that you could not advance any further in this big company. It's the largest single chicken processing plant in the world. It's huge, thousands of employees. That you could not advance any further in this company unless you had a four-year college degree. And I didn't have any college at all, and I was not going to go to college because I was horrible at school. And so, you know, here's a here's a, a lesson. Before that policy came down at Foster Farms. My sponsor in network marketing had approached me many times about joining him in a multi-level marketing venture before the policy came down. And every time I told him, absolutely not. <laughs> like emphatically, no, not ever, don't ever bring it up again. Don't call me again. I would never, ever, ever do what you're proposing we do, which is you know, sell these products, go to meetings, recruit people. I didn't want anything to do with that. And I was really pretty nasty to him. You ever had anybody be nasty to you? Like with a no? I was nasty to him. And then all of a sudden, Foster Farms changed their policy. And my career vaporized. So guess what? It's not that I thought about, oh, I'm gonna call him and get in his thing. But the next time I saw him, he said, so how's it going at Foster Farms? And we just had a different conversation and all of a sudden I just ended up listening. I just listened and I ended up in. Why did I end up in? End up in? Same reason you're all in. Because when you get past the veil, when you get past the stigma, when you get past what people think about network marketing or a business opportunity like this, we all want what's on the other side. And what's on the other side is connection and community and fun and adventure and maybe some shot at financial abundance. 
And in the case of Young Living, wellness. So if you think about everyone you know, one of the things that Kimmy and I teach the people that we coach is, just keep this perspective in mind. Everyone you know wants what you have. It's, it's not that they don't want it. It's in the moment that you ask them to look. They're just not prepared to look. It's not on their radar. It doesn't make sense to them. It's kind of like me at Foster Farms, like I had my whole thing laid out. I, I, like the idea of getting in some sales opportunity never crossed my mind. So when he brought it up, it just didn't make any sense. You know, it's just like, I don't even want to talk about that. But people's lives change, right? And if you just stay in touch with people, if you just stay in relationship with people, if you don't burn the bridge, the timing can be right a month later, six months later, or a year later. And one of the things that we teach people is actually the people that tell you no are your best prospects. It's your best list of people. If you treat them right, if you treat them with respect, if you honor them, if you listen to them, if you actually accept their no, you know, if somebody tells you no, what most people do in network marketing is they argue with a prospect. Somebody says, I don't have time. Oh, sure you do. This doesn't take much time. You know, you can do it while you sleep. You can do it while you drive your car. You know, we argue with people. Somebody says, I don't have the money. Oh, sure you do. If you want it bad enough, yet. we argue with people, right? <laughs> and that has people walk away from the encounter not enjoying us at all or we you know not in young living but in most network marketing companies you know they use all these crazy ploys like if you don't get in now the opportunities you know the trains leaving and all this ridiculous stuff and so the point is if you treat people right the people that tell you no you know that can be two three four five hundred people a year if you're out exposing your opportunity and your products to people they can be the best candidates ever and that's how I ended up in network marketing and uh, so that was 1977. Curious how many of you were not even born in 1977? Okay. <laughs> 40 years is a long time. So I built a sales organization in a company. I ended up running that company uh, for three years. And then I went out to look for another opportunity and I ended up running another network marketing company. I ended up owning that company and or up until June 1st of this year, I owned my own network marketing company for 32 years, based in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I've been involved in the Direct Selling Association on the Board of Directors. I've been on the Ethics Committee of the Direct Selling Association for about 10 years. Network marketing has been my life. And the company that Kimmy and I own, a company called Life Matters, was our life. There are some distinct control and ego advantages to owning your own company. You think about it. So control advantages. Well, if you own your own company, who tells you what to do? Your wife. Kimmy might. But <laughs> Never. <laughs> I mean, it is a pretty heady place to be owning your own network marketing company you get to decide everything what products you sell how you price those products how you market those products what events you're going to have who does what how the company you get to decide everything <laughs> and so for people that like control owning your own company is a pretty big deal and then if you have any ego at all i don't think i have much of one kimmy says i have a really small one <clears throat> but if you have any ego at all, owning your own company is a big deal, if you can imagine that. So how did, how and why did we end up in Young Living? Well, here's a story. So about 10 years ago, uh, about the same time I started, started adding Bliss to my name, so when people Googled me, they'd get me <laughs> instead of Kristen. Brooks. Her name is Brooks Richard, I think. And I think she's kind of over the hill, so she's not, I think she's kind of gone. If you're Googling her, Ty, are you Googling her already? <laughs> I have no idea she is. <laughs> I think she's gone by now. But about 10 years ago, I started this you know, coaching and training business. Uh, I don't know why. People, I don't know. So it's just kind of a, a passion as opposed to a 
something that I really consider to be a profit motive. And you know, Kimmy and I now do it together, and we do retreats, and we do two-day seminars, and we coach people, and we do lots of training. And that's always been separate from our network marketing business. And our clients have been top leaders from other network marketing companies. So this is the story about how we ended up in Young Living. So every time Kimmy and I would do an event, usually a retreat. A retreat is, we actually hold them right here on Lanai, which is an island 50 miles that way, four or five days, 10 women at a time. And after the retreat, Kimmy and I would get together and we'd debrief. You know, these, this people and that person and how'd we do and that sort of thing. And so after about a year's worth of this, the debriefs sh started to show something that we found intriguing. Most of the people in Bliss Business that we either coached or came to our retreats or our seminars, the most successful people were in Young Living. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's true. So now we found that very curious because don't take this personal, even though I'm talking about you. Take it personal. <laughs> so we found that interesting because what we also noticed was, hmm, um, well, they're not the most dynamic leaders. They're not the most outspoken. They're certainly not the best recruiters. They're not the best speakers. In fact, we often ask them, so how long have you been doing Young Living? This is kind of a typical Bliss Business Young Living client. So how long have you been doing Young Living? Oh, I think about three years. I used the product for 23 years before that. <laughs> My parents used the product. And that was a blow. <laughs> so, how you doing in the business? Oh, pretty good. I think. Well, what rank are you? I think I'm a dime. A dime, yes, I'm a dime. <laughs> how much money do you actually make? Well, $35,000 a month. How did you do that? I'm not really sure. I just had some classes and talked about the whole world. <laughs> yeah, it may sound like I'm making fun of you, and in a way I am, but I hope you also appreciate how remarkable and admirable that was, because what we realized is here, what, what we have found in Young Living is a group of people that are uh, truly authentic. So one of the one of the things that Kimmy and I brand ourselves with, we are a stand for. I mean, I, I have spoken all over the world to network marketing groups. Some of them, ten thousand, fifteen thousand people, and the speech is always what's missing in our profession is how people have done it for the last seventy years, how they have deceived people, how they have manipulated people, how inauthentic they've been how polished they've been at their manipulation and their deception. And here we found a, an extraordinary culture of purity and authenticity and realness where people were having extraordinary success and their focus was just on what was real to them. Like their product experience was real. Uh, I, you know, I'm like, I study the industry. I, I can't quantify this exactly, but I, I stand by this as pretty close. 90% of the network marketing companies in our profession, if they had to exist on customer sales alone, would be out of business in a week. Nobody really wants their products. And one of the things that we found about why Young Living people were so successful were people want your products. Yeah. I mean, you know, like what people would tell us is, well, we, you know, we have a class and, and you know, Kimmy, I remember this, Kimmy and I said, so we were interviewing somebody and 
So we asked them, I don't know, Kimmy can tell this story better than I can. She, she remembers who it was, but we asked them. So, uh, so when you invite people to your class, uh, you know, how many show up? And this gal, I don't know, who was this gal? Do you remember? Who was it? Who? Yvonne Litzka? Yeah, you know her? And she's somewhere in the States, one of our clients. But anyway, Yvonne Litzka, her answer was, well, most of them. So we had to ask her again. So when you invite people to your class, how many show up? Her answer was most of them. You know what the answer is for 99% of the network marketing companies in our profession? If you ask the leaders how many people show up to the meetings you invite them to, most of them never even respond to the invite, let alone show up. And then Kimmy asked, how many of them get in? And Yvonne said, most of them. It's remarkable. And so we started looking at our own company, which we had, you know, a, you know, tens of millions of dollars and seven or eight years invested in this. We actually had two companies, but the most recent one we had seven years and about ten or fifteen million dollars invested in. And our company was much more difficult to build than the people that we found in Young Living, the success that they were having. So the next person we went to to try to figure out what is going on here and how is this happening is a was a Bliss Business client, still is, a guy named Adam Green. You ever hear of him? Yeah. Well, Adam, remarkable young man. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody that soaks up experience and distinctions and knowledge and then just goes and implements them without changing them, without questioning them. The, them and you know he's highly ethical and he's very authentic but he's just a massive executor of whatever you teach him to do and so we sat down with adam and say adam explain this to us how are people so successful in young living and you know he talked about a lot of things the products and such but <clears throat> we found something in uh, there's this app called oily tools right yeah. so he showed us this oily tools app and um and there was this number in back in there. I asked him, I said, well, how do you guys calculate that number? And he said, well, that's the percentage of people that are on essential rewards of any, everybody who's ever joined my team. And this number was like 50%. So I had to ask him again, let me get this straight. Of everybody that's ever joined your team, his team was about seven years old at that time. You're telling me about 50% of them are on essential rewards? Okay, you just told us tonight, 67% of your team? Okay. Uh, 57. 57. Yeah. Well, I was just checking. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking. I'm not doing what I want. 57% <laughs> of the people that are on her team are on essential rewards. So just, I can't back these up, but just trust me, these are pretty close. So our company, 8%. 8% of the people that ever joined our company were active. So you might think that's pretty bad. That's actually really, really good. Like some companies like New Skin, Herbalife, Amway, Mary Kay, you know what their percentage is? Single digits. Yeah, it's like two, three, maybe 1%. Yeah, like if a hundred people join Herbalife and you look at them three or four years later, how many are active in Herbalife? Maybe one or two. These are companies that are doing billions of dollars a year. So Kimmy and I, we just we just looked and fortunately we had a, a vision for our people of what we wanted them to experience in their life and their business and that vision was more important to us than owning a company. And we actually, collectively, the two of us, what if, we just asked the question, well, what if? What if we joined Young Living? Which is a really bizarre question for a company owner to even ask. But we asked it enough times that we went to Adam and we said, what do you think Young Living would think about acquiring our company? And he said, I, I, I have no idea. But a week later, we were meeting with Jared, and they thought it was a great idea. And that's how we got here. And I, I just want you to know that um, 
I'm going to tell you some other stories about why you're in the right place at the right time. But we didn't come here because we were failing. We were succeeding. We had a great company, we had great people, great leaders. We were growing every year. But we just could not compare in terms of serving and leading our people. We couldn't compare to the opportunity that you have here. Hmm. And I want to tell you some things about your opportunity that make it special. The first one is culture. Culture to me is kind of like, you know, it's it's kind of mysterious. So like one of the here's an example. One of the first things we did when we figured out people selling oils were killing it. Well, we just decided, what do you think we decided? When we figured out, oh, it's the oils, what do you think we thought we would do? Add oils. Add oils. Add oils. Right? Mm -hmm. We did. In fact, I, I came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked Adam, Adam, what's the top 10 best selling oils? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to know? <laughs> well, we're just going to add them to our company. <laughs> Problem solved 50% retention rate. You might want to look at the other companies that have tried to do that. <laughs> so I did, and guess what? Just about every major company in the U.S., they got oils now. So I know most of the owners of those companies, so I called some of them up. I said, how big a deal are the oils in your company? How big a difference did it make? Guess how big a difference it made? None. Wow. Why? This is not just the oils. Culture is like a recipe. Culture is like a cake. It's like grandma's recipe for the ultimate cake. You know, the one that everybody loves. And you can't just put sugar and flour. I know nothing about what I'm talking about right now, but <laughs> you can't just put sugar and flour or whatever you put in a cake and end up with grandma's cake, right? There's, there's like all of this stuff that goes into it, like all these little ingredients and these little secret ingredients and this little dust of this and it's the timing and the temperature and the humidity and then it's, you know, maybe it's the, you know, the mental manifestation that grandma put on, this cake's gonna be extraordinary and that influenced it. So you put some spiritual energy on it or, I mean, it's just all of this crazy stuff. And you have that in Young Living, you have this, crazy, special, super special culture that's not just products. You have phenomenal products, but there's so much more. Kimmy and I were watching last week. I recommend you watch it. It's phenomenal. I think it's either on Apple or Netflix, but it's a National Geographic documentary on the pygmies. Anybody seen it? Wasn't that special? Really amazing. And here, so it's just, it's an hour long documentary on the pygmies. I think they're in Africa and everybody's mowing down their trees and they don't have any place to live anymore. And it's like crazy, it's really, really good. But here's something that stuck out for me in that documentary. And according to the producer of the documentary, the pygmies as a culture, like it's passed on from parent to child, to just generation to generation, the pygmies the essence of their culture, like this is the, this is how, ev this is how their entire life comes from. Knowing 3,000 different plants and animals in their environment, and the variations of those 3,000 plants and animals through the seasons. So it's not just 3,000 plants and animals, it's as those plants and animals change, most of the plants, through a season. So what does the plant look like? How is it a food in the fall compared to the spring, compared to the summer? The pygmies pickney, own this knowledge. 3,000 bits of information and they survive on it. That's how they live, is knowing what the jungle will produce for them in their livelihood and how it could kill them if you know something is toxic or maybe one part of the season is toxic they know all of this it is the essence of their life and i find that to be like one of the really powerful things about young living is it's not just the oils it's 
it's all the stories and it's, I don't mean the out of compliance things although you know that's part, probably part of it but even if everyone is compliant the stories are remarkable and so here's a couple of examples that I just these things just impacted me hugely so one's recent uh, today's Tuesday and I don't know this one when did uh, Pam come over Sunday Saturday anyway Kimmy recruited one of our neighbors and her name is Pam and Pam comes into our kitchen and it's Pam and Kimmy and who else was there was it yeah Mike and Tina yeah they didn't get in <laughs> they didn't get it yeah anyway <laughs> so it's it's Kimmy and Pam and I think there was one other person there I don't remember who it was and as soon as Pam walks in the room so Pam is brand new she's only been with us now a week they're in the kitchen and Pam says oh I can't even, I, can, I can't even do it because I don't know this stuff yet but I wish I could have it all memorized but Pam's like oh yeah I used the whatever for and I mixed it with the whatever and then it like oh and it was just amazing and then Kimmy's like oh yeah have you tried this for this or tried that for that oh it's just amazing and this other guy said oh yeah we use this for this and use that it's just amazing and I'm standing there in your kitchen going what the hell is going on <laughs> so Kimmy made a great observation she said after everybody left she said you know, nobody, our, the name of our core product in Life Matters was a product called Life Shots. <laughs> Did you make that up? <laughs> yeah, I made it up. It's a great name. And a great product. A great product. And she made it just a profound observation. She said, you know, in seven years, Richard, nobody ever got together around the kitchen table and said, you know, you can use Life Shots for this. And then if you mix it with this, you can use it for this. And it's so amazing, you can use it for this. No, nobody ever said anything like that. So then there's a couple other stories that I used on product that at the time, I didn't know the impact they would have on me. This is actually, I'm going to say this is four years ago. Four years ago, Adam Green and I are walking from the main room at GoPro in Las Vegas. You know what that is? Big yeah. generic event. And we're, it's, it's the end of GoPro. And we're walking down the hallway to the restaurant and wherever we were, the Mirage or wherever the hotel is. We're gonna have lunch. So halfway down the hall uh, comes um, Rob Rennick from Dallas. A friend of mine, been in network marketing for 30 years. He's been in a hundred different companies, but you know, he's just a buddy of mine. Coming down the hall, Rob. Hey, good to see you buddy, give him a hug. This is Adam Green. Uh, he lives in Red Deer, Alberta. He's in Young Living. Rob says, Young Living? Adam says, yeah. Rob says, you got any? I can't remember. It's either Valor or Abundance. He says, you got any? I'll just say Abundance. You got any Abundance on you? I'm like, this is weird. Adam says, well, I got my own personal bottle. Adam pulls out some kind of a satchel. It's got like half a dozen bottles of something in it. I don't know anything about oils at this point. I'm just coaching Adam on how to build a network marketing empire. I don't know anything about his products. So he pulls this little thing out and he says, well, I got my own bottle and it's half empty. And Rob, without hesitation, says, I'll give you 20 bucks for it. <laughs> and Adam says, I'll sell it to you, but I need to put some on first. So he takes his bottle out, he opens it up, dabs it, gives it to Rob. Rob gives him 20 bucks. <laughs> now, I tell you that story because at that time, I'd been net, full-time in network marketing, let's say, 36 years. Never seen anything like that in my entire career. Not anything remotely. No, but no two people ever encountered each other in a hallway of a generic event and somebody says, oh, you're with Isogenics? Yeah. Oh, you got any of that protein shake? <laughs> Nobody, ever. Nobody did that ever with my product. So 
I, you know, it's one of those things that just kind of happens and kind of went over my head, but I didn't forget it. And then it compounded. So Adam and I get to the restaurant. <laughs> We're having lunch with Brian Carruthers and his wife, Melissa. <clears throat> he's a he's in a network marketing company and he does some training. And Adam wanted to meet him, so we're having lunch. Four of us are there for like an hour and a half. We're sitting at a table right here. There's a table right over there where your table is. There's two ladies sitting at that table. And I, I'm a people watcher, you know? So I'm like just watching people. And I notice these two ladies are like, <laughs> they keep rubbernecking over at our table. I'm thinking, <laughs> no ego. <you go. laughs> so they get done with their lunch. They get up. They come over to our table. Wow. You know, we weren't talking about anything that interesting, and we weren't talking loud enough so they could hear us. And guess what they asked us? What's that smell? Who's wearing that? Or who's wearing what? Of course, Brian Carruthers, he's in Legal Shield. They sell legal insurance. He had nothing to say. Adam says he's wearing whatever he was wearing. So he didn't have anything to sell them, but he got their card. And so these, this all happened within an hour and a half of each other. And so I just want to tell you that you have, you have a really, really special culture here. It's a really magnificent recipe. It's not easily duplicated. Maybe with products, but never think pygmies. Your 3,000 distinctions or however many you have and all of your experiences and all of that excitement around the creativity of this product line and how you are all so deeply steeped in wellness and authenticity and being real. And then on top of that, like the last piece of your culture that I recognized and admired was your motivation. And this kind of came out of interviewing Young Living distributors that had done so well, but if you ask them, well, ex what exactly did you do to create that success, they can't really tell you. I mean, that was our experience. Nobody ever said, well, here's my system, here's exactly how I do it. And I know there are some systems in Young Living, but the people that we were working with, they didn't represent it that way. And, but here's what they did, so, so the, the question that I asked them was, well, if you're making that much money, what motivated you to do it? because I kind of specialize in motivation. That's, that's kind of like, like one of my passions is figuring out what makes you and I run, what makes you and I pursue the goals that we would pursue and what we found consistent in Young Living. And I've seen it with so many of the people that we've worked with is you have a natural, it's part of your culture, you have a natural, cultural, intrinsic motivation, which is so rare in network marketing. And what I mean by that is if you go look at a thousand network marketing companies and you look at the people that are successful in those companies and you ask them, what's motivating you? They're going to talk about the contests. They're going to talk about their fancy car. They're going to talk about how much money they make. They're going to talk about their house. You guys don't talk about that stuff. Your motivation comes whether you think about it or not. It seems like, my observation is that your motivation comes from authenticity. Like, if you're not doing it for the money, you're not doing it for the recognition, you're doing it out of perhaps, for some of you, it's service. Like you just want to help people. For some of you, it's family. You just want to help your family. And whether that's $3,000 a month or $30,000 a month, it still falls in the category of helping your family. And if, if Young Living brought a bunch of external materialistic motivation to the party, it wouldn't fly here. It's not that you don't want to rank advance and you don't want to come someplace like this, but that's not the core. And that's part of the culture. 
And just something that we recognize, Kimmy and I recognize, this is a place that can make a difference. This is a company that can make a difference in our network marketing profession. So culture is first, products second, and third is ownership. And I'm gonna talk about ownership for a minute now and then I'm gonna close with ownership. So Gary Young is a special guy. How many of you have met him? Well, that's one of the things that makes him special is most of you have met him, right? Would you, would you agree he's a little bit eccentric? Yeah? yeah? Yeah, which for some people may be a little bit hard to handle. Uh, like, you know, one of the things that Kenny and I did is, we, you know, well, we better Google this guy and find out what his life's been up to because ownership is everything. Everything rises and falls with ownership in network marketing. I mean, he and Mary are the source of everything. So we, of course, Googled him, and, you know, some crazy things came up. I don't know if you've ever done that, but some crazy things came up, which for some people might say, well, I don't want to get in business with a crazy man. Well, let me tell you about a couple of crazy people. One of them Kenny reminded me of as we were flying over here, built this hotel. A crazy man. What was his name, the first name? Chris Hemeter, who's deceased now. Chris Hemeter built this hotel 30 years ago. And what he told the bankers and what he told the tourist industry and what he told the hotel industry when he painted the picture of what he was gonna build here is basically Disneyland on the big island for tourists. He had, when he started, a Jurassic Park here. He had all sorts of exotic animals. This river, the dolphins, the large, nobody had ever built a resort in Hawaii like this. And they told Chris Hemeter he was crazy. And he built it anyway. And 30 years later, people are still enjoying it. I'll tell you another crazy person I've read about. How many of you have ever read the biography of uh, Steve Jobs? Yeah. Read it? Crazy man? Wow, even like, I was like a bit shocked at some of the stuff Steve Jobs apparently said and did. A bit shocked. Like this guy's a little bit of a rebel, maybe a lot of a rebel. This guy's a little rough around the edges. This guy's a little bit crazy. I don't know about in Australia. I've never been there. But I can tell you in the United States, Apple has changed the world. Changed the world. They kind of rise and fall with Amazon, but last year Apple was the most valuable company on the planet. The most valuable company on the planet. That's what Steve Jobs built. So here's what I recognize is as valuable about Gary Young. Uh, and really, really important when you're building an empire in network marketing is that your owner gets tested in times of adversity and in times of success. Uh, I don't know the stories of adversity that Gary faced the first 15 years of this company, but I'll bet they were substantial. Would you imagine that? I mean, Cliff told me some stories of like the early days. I mean, it had to be substantial. Like how many, how many times do you think Gary had a really, really good reason or a hundred reasons in the first 10, 15 years to quit? to give it up, to like, <laughs> I'm just gonna sell oils to my friends, I'm not gonna do this whole network marketing thing. How about when the management team quit and went and started a competitive company across the street? This man has been tested to stay the course and hold his vision of creating a network marketing opportunity where you can create financial freedom. He's been tested through all the adversity. And then the flip side, which people don't think about, is he's also been tested through success. He owns a company outright that does a billion to a year, which makes him a billionaire. billionaire. 
Now, there's a lot of people that if they had, I know he doesn't have $8 billion, but you could probably sell Young Living for at least a billion dollars. There's a lot of people that that would be really appealing to, right? Buy like five big yachts, a couple of big jets. You could buy your own island for a half a billion dollars. Well, Larry Ellison owns our island. He paid a half a, half a billion dollars for it. Gary could do all that. But what we know about him and what you know about him is none of that interests him. What interests him? What is he focused on? What is he committed to? You, us, realizing the dream. Ownership is everything in network marketing. If you have somebody that can't stand the heat, or if you have somebody that can't stand the abundance, like they cave to the abundance, jeopardizes your wealth building, your financial opportunity. So third, ownership, tried and true. Fourth is leadership. I've had the opportunity to work over the years with some beautiful, beautiful people in Young Living. Brenda Schuler, Brenda and Scott Schuler. Do you know them? Heard of them? Yvonne Litska, <clears throat> uh, Adam, of course. Um, what our experience is with Young Living leaders is they're just authentic, pure, beautiful people. The kind of people you just want to have as family. The kind of people you can trust to build an enormous business with. April Pointer, we just. I've got to know in the last three or four months. I mean, what a beautiful human being she is. And she's got an enormous business. And here's the last <clears throat> reason we chose Young Living and what I would ask you to think about. I have heard, it's just a rumor, but I've heard that Young Living in Australia has struggled with embracing the income opportunity. Mm -hmm. Just a rumor. I'm sure it's not true. I don't like to delve in rumors. And <clears throat> so I just want to give you my perspective on that. That I find that to be um, admirable and extraordinary. And it's one of the things that makes you all real and beautiful. And the fact that it's all about the products for many of you makes you totally legitimate and credible and a beautiful thing. And here's my perspective on your products. Like somebody asked me earlier, I can't remember your name off the top of my head, but you know, they asked me, who, who was it that asked me, so have you used all of the oil shit? <laughs> who asked me that? You asked me that. You did ask me that. And I thought, how, how could I possibly use all the oils? <laughs> I don't even know what they are. How can I use them all? <clears throat> and Kimmy probably has used them all because she's deeply steeped in the oils. I'm not. I'm just not that oily yet. <laughs> Forgive me. What? I'm kind of oily. Okay. <laughs> That's a badge that I get to wear. <clears throat> but this has always been like... Um, what I've been passionate about in network marketing and what I've seen, what I've helped people do, what I've seen for my own self, um, that if you have the right products, you can create extraordinary wealth in network marketing. You gotta have the right ownership, you gotta have the right leadership, you gotta have the right culture, you gotta have those other things. But nothing is more important than products. And the the last thing that dropped Kimmy and I into, we have to do this, is your products and all those stories and distinctions that make up the special recipe are so extraordinary that you have an extraordinary opportunity beyond the products. And that is, it, you can actually build extraordinary wealth because you don't have to focus on the products. And I'm not suggesting that you quit talking about the products or making all those things that you make and creating all those stories. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just suggesting that because that's so perfect and so beautiful and bakes such an extraordinary cake, it gives you the opportunity to, with intention, build wealth. And here's what I mean by wealth. There's two kinds of income 
Now, I want you to think about, don't think about you, think about the people that you know. Think about the people that you might talk to about this opportunity in the next year. How much, just think about this, think about how much time they spend every day pursuing, paying their bills, and trying to figure out how to protect themselves in retirement. Like, how do they solve the problem of what are we going to do in retirement? How are we going to retire? How are we going to have any kind of life in the golden years? People spend an enormous amount of time thinking about that, worrying about that. And then they spend eight to 10 hours a day someplace, most of them working just to pay the bills. So the idea of extra income, I'm telling you, is paramount on people's minds. This may rattle you. This may even make you mad. Okay, I'm not here for a popularity contest. Maybe it'll give you a shift in a week. I say this, you could go to everyone you know and ask them, what would you rather have? The most miraculous, God-given oils anybody could ever create or an extra thousand dollars a month for life. Mm -hmm. Now you and I know and agree they ought to pick the oils because <laughs> without your health, a thousand bucks a month won't do you any good at all. But what do you think they'd pick? Most people will pick the money. Why is that? Because money is what pains them the most. Money is what they spend most of their time worrying about. Money is what, like, it possesses them. And so people have two options when it comes to creating some income and some wealth. They can go get a job. You know, you can, you can go to a professional and you can say, hey, you wanna make an extra thousand or $2,000 a month? Most people know how to do that already in their current career, and if they don't, they can just go get a job. But that's linear income. That's the kind of income, if you quit working, the income dries up. It's just income that's totally different than wealth building. And what has captivated my attention for the last at least 30 years of network marketing is how to create network marketing income as wealth building. And we have a beautiful system for doing it. Because when you build a team of a few hundred people, maybe a few thousand people, what you do every day doesn't determine what they do. And that gives you the opportunity when you have extraordinary products to have residual income. What does that mean? That just means if you chose not to be on every conference call, if you chose not to have a class every week, if you chose not to be talking about the products to everyone you know, you still get paid every month. Clear about that? Yeah. And if you have two or three hundred people or two or three thousand people that are earning your income, and those people have yet to achieve their goals, so they still have ambition, they're still upwardly mobile, and they don't rely on you for their ambition. You see how that protects your income? Residual income. So here's some analogies. Let's say you're, what does the average silver in Young Living make? 2,000? A couple thousand dollars a month, right? You're all at least silver, unless you're a guest. You, you know how to get to silver, right? You can see that, you can visualize it, you can make that happen. Here's where wealth building comes in. If you're making a couple of thousand dollars a month as a silver in Young Living, because of the special recipe that makes the cake, because the products and the culture are so special, because people love the products, and because you're making a couple thousand dollars a month, because you got a team of people that are reaching for their own stars, that two hundred, that two thousand dollars a month is worth at least a quarter of a million dollars, if not a half a million dollars, as an asset. So here's how we know that. In order for you, you could use some analogies. In order for you to earn a couple of thousand dollars a month, I don't know what it is in Australia, but in the United States, if you want to earn a couple thousand dollars a month in rental real estate, you would have to own a home that's worth three, four, five hundred thousand dollars. You'd have to own it outright to get that kind of rent every month. That's what the income asset is worth. 
if you want to try to get that kind of income out of the equities market, stocks and bonds and that kind of stuff, $2,000 a month in the United States right now, you'd have to have at least a half a million dollars in the bank. At least. Now think about this. When you think about everybody that you're going to talk to in the next year, how are people in Australia, how are people in the world, common people, I don't mean Ivy League graduates, I don't mean inheritance people, I don't even mean, mean the rarefied air, super smart, super ambitious people that can go create abundance on their own because they're so creative and highly motivated, I mean all the rest of us. <laughs> how are we going to go create a half a million dollars worth of net worth? Like, let's say you want to do it in real estate. Do you know how much money you'd have to set aside and invest in real estate and for how long to end up with a half a million dollar rental house? You're talking thousands of dollars a month for decades. That's the option. You want to build wealth in the, in the markets? Same thing. Invest a couple of thousand dollars a month for decades. So question to think about, all the people that you're ever going to talk to about Young Living, how many of them have a couple of thousand dollars a month to invest? How many of you have a couple of thousand dollars to invest every month, like free cash flow? You don't need it. It's not going to the kids. It's not going to the vacation. Guess what the answer to that is? Hardly anybody has it. We have an extraordinary opportunity to help people build financial independence. And it's because of your culture and your products and your leadership and your ownership. And this company also has, I'll close with this, has an opportunity in my opinion, I believe this with all my heart. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe this. Young Living has the best opportunity of any company in our profession to change the profession. So I don't know about Australia, but my guess is you were to go interview all the Australians about their impression of network marketing as a profession. What company in the history of our profession has influenced their impression the most? Amway. Did anybody say Amway? <laughs> no offense. <laughs> You have that in common as well. Yeah. It would be Amway. Don't blame me. I don't blame you. It would be Amway. Amway does eight or nine billion dollars a year. They have three million distributors around the world. And they have dominated this profession for the last 60 years. And they have dominated with tactics and approaches that have soured the market. Could you imagine what you could build in Young Living? If most of the people that you went and approached about the opportunity knew exactly what you were talking about. Network marketing? I know exactly what that is. You mean the four who get four who get four who get four and I build a million dollars of net worth in the next four or five years? I know exactly what that is. Like they understand it like they understand franchising. Are you with me? What could you build if your prospects understood our opportunity at that level? And if they actually respected and admired it. The model. Nothing about Young Living yet, just the model. What if most of the people you prospected actually understood and admired network marketing? What could you build? I suggest you could build 10 times faster, 10 times bigger. Why? Because you don't have to deal with the stigma. And Amway is the number one company that's created that stigma. And if you look at the, like I've looked for the, I've been in this 40, you know, you know who the number one company was in our profession 40 years ago? Amway. <laughs> number one company today, Amway. My entire career, Amway has dominated this industry. I believe with all my heart, Young Living has the opportunity to displace Amway as the dominant company and beyond that. And here's why I think that. I don't just make that up. Here's why I think that. 24 years, $1.2 billion a year. Growing it maybe 20% a year. Where does that put this company in four years? 2.4 billion. Worldwide. One of the ways we know that happens, 
high is, I think I have these numbers right, about 90% of the sales so far are North America. Hello, Asia. 60% of Amway's $8 billion a year is done in China. One country, just China. Young Living hasn't even scratched the scratch. They haven't even got into the big markets. What about India? There's 300 million middle class people just in India. China, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Taiwan. You haven't even got there yet. I know you're there, but that ain't popped yet, right? Not happening yet. Four years from now, 2.4. Eight years from now, 4.8. 12 years from now, 12 billion. 16 years from now, 16 billion. But just, just in eight years, I see Young Living displacing Amway as the dominant network marketing company in our profession. And here's why we joined because you'll dominate the profession, we'll dominate the profession, and we'll bring to the profession an entirely new culture of honoring people, of authenticity, of realness, of real products that customers actually want and will pay for. And then we'll, do we'll double again, like 16 billion. And somewhere around 16 billion, Young Living becomes the Kleenex of network marketing. It's like this, like somebody is prospected somewhere in the world by some company, by some distributor, somewhere in the world. New Delhi, or Nairobi, or Rio de Janeiro. And the prospect understands that the person prospecting them is talking about network marketing. And the prospect says, oh, you mean like, and instead of, Oh, you mean like Amway, <laughs> right? What do they say? You mean like Young Living. Oh, you mean like Young Living. I know exactly what you're talking about. That's the path this is on. And in that kind of path, that kind of vortex, vortex ladies and gentlemen, you can certainly earn an extra two or $3,000 a month in asset income worth a half a million dollars. There's no other way for almost everybody to do it. I just encourage you, like, think about that when you're talking to the people about the opportunity. You have so much more to offer them than product. And I'll end with this story. You probably haven't heard. Again, you gotta keep in perspective, I've been doing this full time for 40 years. So in 1987, I'd already been in the industry for 10 years. I already built a huge group myself ran a company for three years, and then was running a second company. I was running the second company in a little town you may have heard of historically in Young Living called Spokane, Washington. <laughs> heard of it? So my number one distributor in that company, local Spokane retired Air Force guy, one day said, hey, I met a guy who wants to start a network marketing company and he doesn't know anything about it, and would you mind meeting with him? So I went over to this dumpy house in Spokane, Washington, sat down with this kind of frumpy guy, and he had this big dream about starting this network marketing company. And as I recall at the time, he might have had some financial issues, <laughs> he had some stuff going on in his life, it was not conducive of him launching a network marketing company. <laughs> and then I asked him, of course, well, what are you going to sell? And he went off on these all kind of cockamamie things I'd never even heard of before, didn't make any sense at all. And I, of course, thought this is not a good idea. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. This guy is not a charismatic leader. This guy doesn't have any money. And this guy's gonna be selling snake oil. And I spent two and a half hours with him. And at the end of that two and a half hours, I told him, I don't think it's a good idea. Not because you're not, you don't have the ability. I just told him, there's so much involved. You need so much money. You need, I mean, don't do it. Do it some other way. 
And fortunately, he listened, or it wouldn't have would have probably ruined his life. Well, at least he listened for about four or five years. And then he started Young Living. <laughs> yeah, I met with Gary Young in 1987 and told him, don't bother. <laughs> probably gave him more determination. And here we are. Thanks for listening.